Hello again. Okay, this is um, July the 10th today, and that's just the second part of my July forecast in that sense. And um, let's just zoom back for a second here. That was just half a day before yesterday's new moon in Cancer, that the black moon, the um, mean lunar apogee, had exactly um, uh, its exact meeting with Setna, Setna, that far distant voyager which comes in from an 11,000 plus year orbit around the sun. Very, very special body uh, around 1,000 to 2,000 kilometers, slightly smaller than Pluto, but a substantial body. Setna has been a powerful player in the last, uh, I would say, uh, 18 months, as it's very much um, uh, have, has that energy of lockdown and of separation, as it is entering from such an alien world. It is that frequency of being muted and and looking into the dark, dealing with unusual, strange things, weird and... Uh, but also it is um, very deep and um, rules all the life under the ocean. That is the Inuit um, goddess kingdom, if you want, or queendom. Mm -hmm under the water, the whales and the dolphins and, uh, and all the creatures in the deep, they are her f flock. The black moon shadow worlds and um, all the collectively neglected issues, they are, and that is really resonating here they are accumulating in the deepest trenches of the ocean so to speak so I guess you get the picture and we had that exact meeting of these two with both the sun and the moon in cancer in that last balsamic phase of the moon was a very prophetic window, if you want, and and it is that um, oracle energy which comes in. And yesterday, um, actually, Oracle Girl had a powerful life transmission about how we can care for our fellow family members and friends who are most likely facing serious repercussions for their choices. A very, very powerful transmission that was, those of you who are not yet familiar with her, go to oraclegirl.com, Dr. Jacqueline Hobbs. One of the powerful voices of this time, of guidance, of, of, of understanding of what's going on on a much greater scale Anyway, I thought that was very timely that this message came through and the, whatever the, the quality was of that message, very much rese resembling that Setna black moon energy in the last degrees of Taurus here. Taurus, the sign of physical manifestation of bringing all those hidden shadows into the forefront, giving them form and shape and having them appear in our world and real life, so to say, so we can properly deal with them and be done with them for all and ever. So it is biblical times we're in. I guess there's no question to that anymore. Anybody who uh, is following my um, predictions for sure knows that. So then we... Okay, I just want to say one more thing 
regarding this chart uh, the moon here in a square to Chiron in a perfect sextile um, not no uh, that's not true it's a sextile here between the south node and Saturn and then there is the yacht here with the moon so it's a strong Saturn theme too which comes here in to focus this in Saturn is very related to Setna um, as you already can see by just looking at the two symbols they're very similar there's something very Saturnian about Setna too and the moon here at 10 degrees and something that is the scorpionic toward bringing that scorpionic energy of death and transformation of 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 intensity of emotions and then um just one more word i have here for the new moon i didn't mention that in my first um, video here on this topic it is the aquarian ward where the new moon happened aside from what i already shared with the 54 and 53 hexagram that powerful um signature brought in by the I Ching and additional information so if you haven't listened to that yet um, I suggest you also listen to the first part here of my July new moon video then um, as I mentioned um, just a short while after a few hours later there is the Sun Hilanom opposition or hearth hilanom conjunction that is and then um, on the 11th now and that's where we are now continuing with the other ones i covered already in my earlier one so this is again the greenwich chart now let's have a few words with arakot what is arakot standing about what it is representing arakot is the farthest distant um, object of the solar system which has been visited by spacecraft where we have all the information uh, they did an exact scientific um, reading on it it was the new horizon probe which originally was looking at pluto after pluto had been visited that probe actually it, it went the other way around astronomers were then f putting all their energy into searching that small window of space where potentially that space probe could get toward and they were scanning it for potential new planets and Arakot was one of those they found I think there were three or four they found and they decided to zoom in on Arakot and look at this um, far distant object and actually and that is the surprising thing um, what then came out of this that was on January the 1st 2019 when New Horizon space probe was at the closest and took all this information scanned the whole thing January the 1st 2019 very symbolical too because this couldn't have been planned just on the first day of a new year in 2019 as we know was really the first year where things really were opening up in a way of us being able to see things in a bigger way and that's exactly what Arakot is about it is opening our vision it has been named after uh, Indian tribes name for st a man standing under the open sky it's that bigger picture 
a deep insight. So what I wanted to say is that yes, science now has to rewrite the whole history of the solar system after Arakot has been studied. That's how big it was and they had to go back to the drawing board, start from, from scratch and, and rethink how the universe could have been built, how this solar system would have come into its present form. So again, all these stories which are surrounding the discovery of planets are extremely important. They are great, great um, uh, ha um, insights. They offer great insights into what a planet is really representing. Always a good start. And then you do the research, you compare it, look at it, how it expresses in charts and such. So this is a great and powerful moment when Earth has its yearly alignment with Arrokot. And again, this happened just or will happen actually still in the future as we speak here. A couple of days after New Moon with the Moon here in um, Leo, 10 degrees Leo and the Sag, Dwarf, Leo, Sag energy and opposing Saturn, interestingly enough. And this in itself gives us a hint of what kind of energy we will be able to see the bigger picture of Moon Saturn is rather difficult and dark. So that's really the first um, step in the right direction is to uncover and to expose and to take it all in, as we said already in, in the other um and, and yes when we were talking of the black moon and said now right that's what i just talked about a few minutes ago so um this chart is followed not long after by um well that's the same for um uh, washington and what I find interesting here is um, Hygieia and Pheroes here at the top of the chart, among many, many other things, but just this being a kind of what stands really out. Hygieia, health, well-being, it will be the big focus of this realignment. And Pheroes, the fierceness of Mother Bear of caring for her cups, of caring for whom we are emotionally connected to. It is that um, energy, you just do not uh, think of, 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 of danger or are afraid when you are there to rescue, to step in, to help. And Hygieia also is often showing up as being in the right place at the right time. It's a great timing. So this is very hopeful as I already shared with you the midpoint chart with the American nation's birth chart. Then um, another really cool thing is this Venus-Mars conjunction, which is just really closing in two days later on the 13th. It will be exact as we will look at in a minute. So just stay here and um, and keep watching <laughs> and we will get there. So anyway, this Venus-Mars conjunction is T-squaring the ascendant and descendant of the American nation's chart again, uh, of the American nation's capital, I should say. So it kind of implies that the big creative changes are very much connected to that location on our planet a new creation, a new society will come in and it definitely that's where it's all rippling out from. We know that um, for a long time already. America has been promised um, by many, many seers to be the portal into the new um, Earth, I would call it the, 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 the new paradigm, those thousand years of peace that 
rebirth of humanity into a new timeline. That's all around the corner, all starting out from the American capital being again just the the symbol for 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 the for the whole country and the whole world in that sense who is on that same wavelength also beautiful here that the moon and the moon is approaching this conjunction here hmm? closing in on venus and mars and together with Hygieia and Heroes, there is this beautiful symmetry going on. Mars Venus is pretty exactly at the midpoint of these two. If we do the math, that's 36. Um, uh, yeah, about 1830. So pretty much Mars. Yeah, Venus is here in the middle. Beautiful, beautiful, powerful symmetry of the moon ch chiming in here. So now let's uh, go to another subject here for a second, which um, kind of gives this ever more importance, what we're just speaking of, which is the Mayan calendar. So today, as I'm recording this, we are on this day here, day 13. No, I'm sorry, I'm in the wrong one. It's... Um, okay, let me look closely. It's this one. This is the one we're on. Okay, sorry about that. 13 Lamat, it's the yellow cosmic star. The last day of this 52-day sequence we just come out of. This is number 52 in that sense of the yellow southern castle. And again, this is this round, uh, this calendar round started on December 15, 2020, just one day after the solar eclipse of December 2015. Great um, synchronization there. So this was giving a strong signal that these 260 days, which started again on December 15 2020 come to a close on august 31st 2021 just 52 days away now anyway so the long story short we're entering the last um castle the green central castle The Green Central Castle of Enchantment. This is actually a really great um, site if you're interested. This site gives you all the poems as given by Jose Arguelles, lawoftime.org. So this is um, today here, the yellow cosmic star, and then tomorrow starts the last important 52 day uh, cycle with the red magnetic moon that is tomorrow the moon always is a very emotional day so be prepared big waves of emotions might come in activating our heart center i unify in order to purify attracting flow i seal the process of universal water with the magnetic tone of purpose, I am guided by my own power doubled. It will be a powerful day, I can promise. This is um, the um, other side I'm recommending, which is offering the ability to, um, to find out any day in history what its frequency would be in the Mayan calendar. So here you can put in your birth date or whatever date you like to know of and you will get the daily oracle of that day. So tomorrow again, yes, magnetic moon, the red magnetic moon, a new start, the green sen uh, castle of enchantment, which is the 52 days of integration, what has happened and coming 
into motion over the last four castles, the last 208 days. So amazing synchronicity again there. Just wanted to throw this in quickly. Then if we go to the next station of creation, which is then when the Venus-Mars conjunction will be exact on the 13th of July, Here you see the two, Venus, Mars. And while they are exactly in the same degree, Venus passing by Mars as seen from Earth. Always, it's the perspective which counts. It's all about perception. And if you change your location, your perception will change. That's the idea here, because if you're in a new environment, you're a different person too. So it's, we are very permeable and we constantly shift and change in our energies too. And this comes really clear through that basic um, idea of astrology that you're always looking, how am I perceiving things from where I stand? So the moon, on that in that moment then when venus mars have their conjunction moon always very important because the moon is the fastest one to move except from earth's rotation which is um, then telling us how the whole energetic wheel is suspended by earth's structure by earth's axis by the horizon and the and the plumb line and such. So moon opposing Jupiter, that's again very loud. That's always my way of seeing Jupiter when it particularly is aligned with the moon. It's something big, something loud, something which has great repercussions. Jupiter is the planet of change, of fast motion, of evolution in a very, very general way. Jupiter is here in the first degrees of Pisces now for the last few weeks, for sure, I forget when it was, but it's in this first part of Pisces for about three months. It's a, an extremely wonderful time to plant seeds for the new world, the new earth, which is coming and the moon here activating the moon actually in um, virgo is he very well placed it's one of the best signs for the moon it brings out that self-care that ability to love oneself to see that i am my best parent i'm my best friend and that's exactly what we have to get to it is that um deep resonance with being in that place nature has for all of us giving us exactly what we need at the right moment then naturally i mean when this venus mars conjunction is exact the earth at 21 degrees and something in capricorn in the virgo dwarf making the sign of virgo even more important aw 197 is in here that's the stealth bomber the one small planet which has been known for probably almost 20 years and hasn't been named yet which is very unusual because it's a substantial one it's about 800 kilometer in diameter has been discovered as we see in 2002 still unnamed so it has that energy of being undetected doing its work in a very um Yes, um, behind the scene. So I like it also. I like to compare it to um, Aikido. Hmm? 
and the art of war that's um, one way um, because it was Nicolas Fiorenza he came up with that first a great way of seeing it Orcus is here Orcus which is all about alchemy alchemy of um, all the lower uh, um, and um, pathological frequencies of Nessus one of the really big themes of our times transforming the lower into the higher that's where Orcus is so all these asteroids are getting activated here in Virgo 2 with this Venus Mars conjunction as the moon is here again the zero degree um, Scorpio or one degree Scorpio ascendant here in the global chart with Radamantis. Radamantis we have spoken about before Radamantis is the um, was it's this is based on the Greek mythology he was a vice king very very scrupulous impartial honest in, in high integrity and Zeus actually made him the judge of the dead after he was in the spirit world that's high, how high um, Radamantus moral status is so it is about judgment day that's to come we saw that also in the other chart with Varuna which has a very similar frequency just zooming back here quickly to show you once more Varuna here at the fourth house cusp in the global new moon chart we talked about that so um, yes this is the Venus Mars conjunction again July 13 and then what about that hmm? Saturn exactly at the source point of the chart this is um, not to be taken lightly this new creation will have to eradicate first and clear the space from what is not healthy and forward looking what is stuck in a different dimension it will be a, a, a strong intervention of karma you could call it that um, uh, that Saturn here I mean this is not just Saturn here this is all the many things we were talking about kind of a conclusive statement here then um, let's move on to this next chart that's the same moment for Washington DC I really am um, um, not surprised to see the early degree of Virgo here rising with AW197 which we just talked about that stealth bomber that being able to use the enemy's energy and redirect it and make him fall into his own defeat kind of that boomerang effect with the moon here Jupiter opposing and how about that that is the Washington DC chart for that Venus Mars conjunction with no less than the black moon and Sedna here in the exact um, zenith degree this is a foreboding that yes this is the breakdown of something huge of the deep state of all that corruption of all those forces which are representing the old system the slave system as um, Oracle Girl calls it rightly and that slave system has its tentacles in everything and each one of us too so that's why it's also purification which is um, very important and and cutting off all these tentacles from within our own um, aura our own energetic bodies so this is not an easy time we're in but again the forward-looking um, 
angle is what matters most and just deal with what comes one step at a time and be ready to let go and move on into the new dimension don't look back don't uh, do it as uh, abraham's wife did um who uh, looked back in 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 kind of um yeah that nostalgia um that's where i left everything behind my house is now in flames and all that no don't do that she turned into a pillar of salt that's exactly the message we are getting here this is the midpoint chart with the american chart i again just thought that was um quite remarkable how um this fits in here too and let me just see what were the things i most wanted to share with you here well i don't i'm not able to see it right now that is okay no worries let's just move on to the next one that is the one actually which we already talked about i didn't show you this chart but yet that was the um chart um when td10 that um small cooper belt object was exactly conjunct earth or opposing the sun just short before new moon which we talked about in the other video just again showing how powerful pluto is placed here and that's what it's all about this just to say it once more um, this td10 shows up let me just pull that up once more because i have all the keywords here that's from a while ago when i did this work sinking one's teeth into something determined obsessed driven insisting it's the stubbornness the strong focus that's all what has been activated globally with pluto in, in the in um in the in the line of, of fire hmm? pluto is the one which has to be transformed in that sense okay i guess that's it then um i hope i shared some interesting stories with you if you um liked it give it a like and uh, subscribe or whatnot and share it <laughs> okay again it was lovely uh, thank you for listening and you guys have a powerful wonderful month of july and just know yes standing back allowing the beast to have its last convulsions that's important don't get too involved just wait it out things will get better by September, I promise you, we are entering a new frequency all together. Thank you. Bye-bye.